All right, what's up, people? Uh, first thing first, I really wanted to say a big thank you to everybody who watched the video or liked or comment. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting going into this, but I sure wasn't expecting uh, that many views in uh, this little amount of time. Uh, so yeah, so big thank you to all of you guys. Also, I really wanted to push that video as fast as possible, um, but Mother Nature said no. That that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm in a zone with a major power outage. Uh, I haven't had power for three days and I have no clue when I'm gonna get it back so I went out and buy a generator so I can make this video so uh, if you hear like a rumbling noise in the back well it is what it is right <laughs> you get this video but you get the generator sound in the background all right so let's get on with this so I wanted to make this video about mr. underrated Matthew Savoy or Matthew Savoy I'm not sure how we say that actually it doesn't really matter uh, he's been sliding down of everybody's list almost all year. He started at number two overall and now he's uh, like some people even have him outside of their top 10, which is crazy to me. I understand the whole thing about five on five, on five uh, points, but uh, this guy is so full of potential. And uh, you know what? Just let me show you real quick who Matthew Savoy is. As you can see, he's a pretty electric player and a natural sharpshooter. He's always at the right place and he has a pretty good shot and he can shoot from very sharp angles. Uh, he, he has a very in-your-face, close-to-the-net type of game which really translates well to the NHL. So let's take a look at his stats. Alright, so 18 years old, centerman, shoots right, 5'9", 180 pounds. Uh, he's a pretty bulky kid. A lot of people think he's gonna play on the wing in the NHL. I think he has what it takes to stay as a centerman, but uh, there's not many 5'9 centers, so it all depends on the team wherever they need him to play. So, yeah. Other than that, uh, 64 games played, 35 goals, 55 assists for 1.38 point per game. Uh, it's good. It's not great or excellent, but it's good. He has some pretty good company around those numbers, but also some bad company. So we'll see that a little bit later. Uh, is even strength production 62%. So people have been saying he has a problem at even strength. I mean, it's a fair point. But um, let's not forget that he actually was on the ice for 77% of his team's even strength goal. So that's the highest number in the all WHL. So. I mean, it's a fair point, but it's not a complete point when people say he's bad at even strength. 75% uh, of his points are primary points at even strength, so that's very good. 209 shot for 16.75% percentage of uh, completion. 209 shot, he's definitely not a high volume shooter, but uh, he's a good shooter at 16.75% at 16 uh, completion. Like, there's... People like Conor Bedard or Logan Stankoven who are like over 300 shots, so 209 is not volume, but still decent. And uh, face-off percentage, 51%. It's good. It's not. There's nothing to say about it. It's not bad. It's not great. It's, it's good. It's perfectly good. All right, so let's go see how he fares against other players from previous draft. All right, so here we're gonna go see how he compares to previous players. Uh, so for the filters, we applied the same thing as last time, which is 17 to 18 years old to make sure we don't have any uh, overagers, draft eligible, minimum 10 games so we don't get the 4 or 5 points per game type player. Uh, starting season 2000-2001, so we don't have 50 years of data, 22 should be perfectly fine. So where we go, where's Mr. Savoy? It's right here. Alright, 
So 90 points, 1.38 point per game. Uh, who does he has around him? <laughs> Cody Glass and Nolan Patrick. All right, that doesn't start well. Uh, well, first thing first, he plays with a ton more pace than Cody Glass ever did and ever will. So that's a our, just there. He can adapt really well to the NHL, way better than Cody Glass can because he plays with more pace. Nolan Patrick, it's more a problem of health issues that he didn't succeed. So there's that. It's sad, but it is the way that it is. Uh, if we look down a little bit, we can see here Matthew Barzell and Braden Point. Oh, that's cool. Because actually, when I was thinking about uh, finding a player for to compare Savoy to, I, I had a hard time finding a player that, that played the same way. And I came with like an in-between of Matthew Barzell and Braden Point. So it's funny that when I'm going down this list, I can see here that he's actually really close in point production than both of them in the WHL. Um, because he plays a similar, he plays like in between those two, in the sense that Matthew Barzell is probably a better playmaker, but as a lesser shot, but a better skater. And Braden Point is a more in your face type player, um, but also a better shooter than Matthew Barzell can ever be. So uh, he's like right in the middle of those two players, which is uh, kind of cool. So, <laughs> all right. So, all right. So let's go see what uh, Mr. Savoy can do on the ice. All right. So let's talk about his shot a little bit. Uh, first thing first, he has a pretty good one timer. Uh, he likes to shoot the puck against the grain, if you will. Like he'll shoot against the goalie's motion most of the time instead of trying to power one through the short side. Uh, his one timer is a lot more about uh, accuracy and placement than it is about power. Well, same for most of his shot actually. Uh, he also has a good wrister where he's capable of beating goalies from a good distance and he has a good snapshot which he can let go in stride and with a pretty fast release so that's really good. Actually, he's a bit reluctant to use his shot for some reasons uh, but he would gain from shooting more often. As I said in the beginning of the video, he only has 209 shots, which is not bad, but with the quality of his wrister and his snap, uh, he could get a lot more goals by shooting a little bit more. Alright, let's talk about his skating now. Uh, as you will see in those clips, he's a really good skater. I wouldn't say he's one of the best in the draft, like I'd place him in that second tier right after like the Logan Cooley and the Brad Lambert of this world. Uh, his strength is he's a really deceptive skater in the sense that he's always using his crossover. Uh, players, they, they just never know in which direction he's going because he's always in crossover motion. Uh, he's also really good at accelerating through those crossovers. He's not necessarily a speedster in a straight line, but with his agility, his deceptiveness, his acceleration, and the amount of east-west movement he gets from each crossover, his skating will definitely be a strength in the NHL. So here I wanted to show his IQ, like um, his ability to be aware of where his teammates are or where they are going. So even though I often saw him try to force plays where more effective plays were available to him, he seems to always know what's coming. Whether he positioned himself as a trailer on the Udman rush to release a well-positioned shot, or whether he just used a quick give-and-go to better position himself for a pass to the slot, he most of the time seemed to recognize and seemed to know the best play to create a high danger chance. Uh, I don't have any stats on that, but my guess would be that he's one of the best high danger chance creator in the CHL for sure. Alright, so here we'll be talking about his bread and butter, his playmaking ability. So, in this draft, in my opinion, he's one of the premier playmakers. Not only because of his awareness I previously talked about, but also because he has the skills to execute very difficult passes. He doesn't rely on deceptiveness that much for his playmaking, he's just pure skills. He doesn't try to attract players on him to release pressure on his teammates like Shane Wright would do. Once again, he's pure skills. He'll laser it through everybody's sticks and legs if that's what he needs to do, because he's pure skills. But he also understands that sometimes a short pass to an open player in the slot is a better play than an attempt at a cross-ice pass for a one-timer. He's a very creative player and he's very smart in the way he relocates to execute passes sometimes. Again, 
This is based on viewing and not on stats, but I think he could become a premier slot passing machine a la Robert Thomas in St. Louis. So even though his major strength is definitely his playmaking, he's also a very well-rounded offensive player. So in the end, I'm not sure I understand why everybody is so down on him, but let's go take a look at his strength and weaknesses grading. So here I tried to be a little less bullish on the player. Some of you thought I was grading Shane Wright too harshly, so I tried to lower my standards a little, and from there, we'll see how it goes. So first thing first, skating and playmaking, 8 on 10, they're definitely his best two assets, so uh, yeah, I would say they are high end. Aki Sands, 7 on 10, Compete, 7 on 10. Uh, he's competing really hard. I'm not willing to give him an a 8, but a, a good 7 because definitely he's always trying to drive the middle of the ice and he's competing hard even defensively. Uh, a shot 7 on 10. It's not a high end shot, but like I said, if he end up shooting more at the net, he's going to be a good goal, goal scorer in the NHL too. And his puck skills above average 7 and 10. So in the end, a really good player. So that's it for Matthew Savoy. Thanks a lot for watching. Let me know in the comments who you would like me to review for my next scouting report. And also guys, I'm currently working on a project to make a draft ranking video solely based on stats. So we can come back on it in a couple of months or a couple of years and see how the stat model compares to the traditional scouting. So let me know if you're interested. Once again, thank you very much for watching. This is Blue Chip Prospect. Peace out.